Kiefer, man, I uh, appreciate taking some time. I, I see you're enjoying that nice weather out there in Kansas City, man. Uh, so, I, I mean, first off, I, I saw that on, on your Instagram feed was the first thing I noticed. And, of course, I know your teammate, James Gallagher, he's been training out glory since the end of last year. Uh, so was was part of this like, hey, I, I need to adjust my, my body to, to U.S. time, and I know I've already got a training partner at a gym? Yeah, kind of. Look, Ireland is going through a bit of a fucking sticky situation at the minute with all this COVID shit. You know, lockdowns, places closing down, and it's just, it's a very, it's it's in a bad state at the minute. So uh, I was coming out to Connors for you anyways. James has been asking me for like the past year to come out and do a bit of training in Kansas, and uh, I took him up on the offer, and I'm so glad I did. I've been getting great training out here with uh, James Krause and all his boys, and you know, it's it's good to change it up as well. And especially before the fight, I'm training with people that I've never met and different bodies and getting new reactions and they don't know what my strengths or weaknesses are. I don't know what theirs are. And that's that's all a fight is at the end of the day, is is two martial artists throwing their techniques at each other and trying to figure shit out. And it's good to have, you know, fresh bodies that I don't even know trying to beat me in scenarios. And likewise, I'm doing the same to them and, it's uh, it's been great to be honest. The past week and a half has been fucking brilliant, and uh, Kraus has looked after me you know, tremendously. You know what I mean? He's took me under his wing proper, and uh, he's been getting I've been getting great training. So I'm so glad I came out. Yeah, I've talked to obviously a lot of people inside the gym, and they 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 rave about James as a coach. For you as as a guy coming in, you know you're you're meeting him, you're learning about his coaching style. What, what jumped out to you about how he teaches techniques to his fighters? It's just how uh, it's to the point he is. No bullshit with James Krause, you know what I mean? He's just to the point. He just, there's no bullshit about him, you know what I mean? And obviously you can tell from as soon as you train with him, he's at a high level. Um, I've been doing rounds with him almost every day and training with him and he knows his shit inside out, you know what I mean? And uh, obviously I've been doing martial arts a long time too, so it's easy to, to see a bullshit and see someone who knows what they're talking about and someone who, who doesn't. He knows what he's talking about, you know what I mean? Plus... Obviously, I've seen James's fights throughout the years in the UFC and stuff like that. I knew he was a great fighter. I've seen him in corners. I knew he was a great coach. And obviously, with James Gallagher telling me how great he was, I, I trust James Gallagher's um, opinion on things. And, you know, as soon as I met him, as soon, uh, I met him in Vegas, actually, and we trained. And as soon as I met him, we clicked, and it's been great training. He's been a great training partner as well as a coach. You know, he gets in and does all the rounds every day. And... Uh, He's got great information and great knowledge about this sport, and it's been great, you know what I mean? I, I guess one of the storylines for you heading into this fight is the lightweight debut here. We, we've seen you you know, in, in some catch weights, 165, 160 in Bellator, you know, and so you've been working your way down. Was this just kind of a, a gradual process that you were taking to get the 55, that it was just about you know, you know changing your body to, to make sure you're going to be at peak performance? Uh, yeah, kind of. The last two fights were supposed to be at lightweight, but uh, the opponents changed and pulled out and stuff. So they ended up being catch weights. So um, the la- again, the last one I was looking forward to making lightweight, and then again, opponent changed. He couldn't make lightweight. So this time we got a bit of nose on this one. The opponent hasn't changed yet. So it's a lightweight fight. So yeah, I'm looking forward to making it and I've been officially a lightweight fighter. Do you know what I mean? It's been a long time coming. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to actually hear lightweight when I step on the scales. I, I know one of the things that you put on, on Instagram is you said, if you don't separate yourself from your distractions, your distraction will separate you from your goals and the life you want. And I talked to other fighters, they talked about in this game, you know what, there's going to be things that you just can't do in your social life. Is, is that what you're talking about? The, you know, those distractions of like, look, I just got to be in the gym. I don't really have a social life, to be honest. I have a family life and I have a gym life and it's, it's it's gym home gym home and although that may seem boring and it is like sometimes it can be very you know repetitive and boring and there's not much going on people think fight life is like glitter and glam and this and that and parties and shit if you want to be the best in the world it's none of that shit you know what I mean and you know years ago when I was growing up I was so distracted I had so many bad people around me I was in bad circles I was doing stupid shit I was running around acting the bollocks and uh I was getting nowhere and I was getting nowhere fast and I was very unsuccessful. Now that I put my head down and I focus on the gym and I go home and I focus on the gym and I go home, I'm more successful. So the, the antidote, it's working. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and I just, 
if, you know, you're not, you only get out of life what you put into it. And if you put the work in, you reap the benefits of your hard work. And I, nobody works harder. I mean, I'm in the gym every single day. I show up early. I leave late. I'm twice a day. I study. I write shit down after every session. I watch tape. It's on my brain 24 seven and six days a week with this. And then the day I have off is like a rest day and I'm still focused on my next week ahead. And I, I take this very serious and uh, I pride myself in my hard work. And, t- and now it's actually paying off, but it's, it's true. A lot of hard, hard work over the years, not just the past couple of months. You know what I mean? It's a lot of ups and downs and a lot of, lo- a lot of downs. But I learned from them downs. I've been face down. I've been on my back. I've had no money. I've been poor, I've been broke, I've been wrote off so many times that I know what that's like. I can relate to them feelings and I can relate to that lifestyle. And now finally, all the hard work is paying off and it's working. So I'm just going to keep doing this and work even harder. And that hard work motivates me to work even harder. And here I am. Do you know what I mean? So I I must be doing something right, mate, to be honest. You know what I mean? You mentioned about watching tape. So when you put in the tape of Georgie, what like is there something that sticks nah, out to you? I haven't really watched him. I study. I study a lot of fighters in general, and every time I watch fights, I watch them like I'm a coach. I watch them like I'm. I'm not a fan nearly. It's like a, I watch it like I'm in school. You know, what I mean? it's an educational tape viewing more so than a fan viewing it. You know, although I am a fan of MMA and I love watching MMA for entertainment, it's more of an educational purpose. Um, so every fight I watch, I don't really watch my opponents that much. I'll have a glimpse at them and I'll look at them. I don't want to fall in love with their style or, oh, you got to do this or he's right-handed or he re-. I don't give a fuck, to be honest. He could come out next week and do whatever. I don't know what he's going to do. He doesn't know what I'm going to do. And the whole idea of fighting is to trick each other into doing things that, you know, we think we're going to do and then we don't do them. So I, I think people fall in love with watching tape on their fighters and study and game plan. I've never gone into a fight with a game plan and I'm never going to because I don't believe in it. It's a fight at the end of the day. I don't know what's going to happen. I need to see. But the whole idea is that we, we react at the right time in the moment and uh, the truth will be told who's put their work in. I believe I've put the work in over the years. I believe I'm a, a very, very high level martial artist. And I'm, I'm excited to go in there and just roll the dice and feel it out and win this fight based on my reaction skills and my, my IQ. And that's the way I look at all these fights, to be honest. You know what I mean? I don't really study my opponents per se, but I study tape in general. You know what I mean? I watch every fighter and I take something from every fighter. You know what I mean? Is that a mentality you've always had of, of not, you know, going deep into film studying your opponent? Or was there a point in your career where you just realized that maybe you were paying too much attention to your opponent? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I, I've not only myself, but I've seen other people do it. You know, I've, I've been in other people's corners and they're like, oh, he didn't do what I thought he was going to do. And I'm like, yeah, exactly, because this is a fucking fight. And you can't, you know, oh, he has a right kick. Oh, he's going to go for the takedown. And next of all, he comes in on a southpaw stance and doesn't go for a takedown. Now what are you going to do? Oh, he's a jiu-jitsu black belt, but then he comes in and he's throwing overhands. You fall in love with this stuff too much and you go in here distorted, thinking, oh, he's going to do this. He's, Man, I know from my own self, I don't even know what I'm going to do next week. I don't even know what I'm going to do on my fight. So how is he going to know? So if I look at it from the other way around, well, then there's no point in even looking into him too much, to be honest. I genuinely don't care what he's going to do. And I just have to be switched on, eyes wide, sharp on my feet and ready to fight. And that's it. And I put the work in me. I've covered all areas. I'm a mixed martial artist. And that's why it's such a beautiful sport because nobody knows what the fuck's going to happen. That's why you're all tuning in. That's why it's the best sport in the world. Because nobody knows, you know what I mean? So if you were <laughs> not a martial artist, what would you be? Man, I don't know. I got asked that question a few minutes ago. I don't know, to be honest. I never go into the sub story about life and negativity and shit, but, you know, I didn't have the best of backgrounds and the best of pasts, and uh, martial arts kind of took me all them roots and gave me a purpose in life and raised me from the dark times, and uh, it's the only thing that's ever really made sense in me life. It's the only thing I've ever been... Um, excellent that you know what I mean I've never been good at anything else and I've come from bad bad spots and you know I've been in bad spots and I, I know where I've been and I take motivation from all them dark times and them rock bottoms and them horrible horrible places I've been in my life and uh, again I wake up every single day I open my eyes I wake up grateful that I'm alive and grateful that I'm healthy and grateful that 
I get to go to a gym and practice what I love and then, you know, stay in shape and become a better athlete and my head is clear and I'm not suffering with like depression, depression and have all these horrible feelings and stuff. And I'm just ha- happy. You know what I mean? And, and then I get to fight in front of thousands of people in attendance and millions of people watching and I get paid to do that. Like all of these things are so positive and great for me. You know what I mean? That I'm just grateful, mate. This life is, is, uh, it's short. None of us are getting over a life. We're all going to die. And this is the, the route I cho- chose. And I love martial arts. I really do. I love martial arts all my heart. And I'm going to do it until I can't do it anymore. And when I can't do it anymore, I look back and be proud of all I've done. And I think everyone should do the same. Just pick what you want to do. Love what you do. Wake up every day and say, what the fuck do I want to do here? I want to do this. Well, go do it and go be the best in the world at it. And don't let anyone tell you you can't. Because so many people have told me I can't. I'll never make money from this. You'll never get anywhere with this. This isn't a real sport. That's barbaric. That's this and that. Irish people never make ah, nah, 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 nah. I've heard it all. And here I am. So I'm just grateful, mate. I'm just fucking so grateful. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm healthy. And I'm ready to go and represent my country again and fight and uh, get paid to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm, living, I'm living the dream, as they say. You know what I mean? Really am. Um, 